have Jansu with me, right from International SEM Analytics, and we are going to talk about recipe similarity and many optimization. Uh, and let's start. Here is outline, and uh, and thanks and kudos to Pedro who designed the logo here as well. I'd like to thank him as well. Uh, we would like to explore how we compare different recipes in terms of their similarity and how many optimization and planning teams are leveraging this uh, approach in their planning process. We'd like to briefly talk about those. Uh, at first, we got this question, how can we compare the recipes based on their similarity? Actually, the, our answer was by looking at their ingredients, cooking methods, and some other uh, attributes related to the recipe. We knew uh, most of these features are available in our data warehouse, but how uh, we can compare a tool that compares them. We can, as humans, we can easily compare them and we can have a basic idea about the similarity of both recipes any combination of recipes, but we need to make a tool that makes them actually. And now to make a machine compare them, we need to convert them into some numbers, actually arrays that uh, that can that we can make mathematical operations and co compare them uh, properly. The, there are pre-trained embedding models. They are general neural networks. They are capable of converting texts into numbers. One of the libraries is called SentenceBird or short SBird, which is able to convert some text into vectors. But there is a very special uh, thing about these vectors. That is that if the texts are closer in, in the vector space or the angle between them is small, not big, we expect them to be similar in the meaning. That is, here on the right side, you will see stick, stick, and pork. Let's imagine these are two-dimensional vectors. When we calculate the angle between them, since they are both meat and red meat, especially they are, their meaning are close to each other. And so we expect a little angle between them. And for the beef and strawberries, since these are uh, dissimilar in terms of meaning in, based on the recipe and the ingredients. One of them is fruit, one of them is actually red meat. We expect a larger angle between them. So we thought that we could utilize this information to compare our recipes because we have most of the features available in our data warehouse. Here our algorithm Actually, basically, I can uh, say that at first uh, we are calculating recipe uh, ingredients embeddings for each of the attributes. As you can see, protein, primary protein, primary source, vegetable, dish type, and this list goes on. And then we assigning weights to each attribute here. For example, protein has a uh, weight. All of the ingredients has a weight. These weights are uh, decided heuristically, actually. We didn't learn them, but we it is an improvement side, actually. We would like to have, in the future, we would like to learn those weights specific to the tasks. For example, uh, from the input of the menu planners that can say both of, some recipes are similar or not similar. We can learn some weights and use them in different tasks. And when we uh, have embeddings for each different each different ingredients of the recipes, we can when we sum them, we have a weighted average of embeddings, as you can see on the right side. So this is the all, uh, overview recipe embedding that we have. If we apply this approach to every recipe we have, we can easily compare any uh, pair of recipes, and we have a and then. When we calculate the cosine angle between them, as we call cosine similarity, we will have a number between minus one and one. If it is one, that uh, close to one, that means strong similarity between them, or minus one, there are no similarity.
let's imagine we applied recipe embeddings, all of the uh, recipes we have in our database, and then we project this into two dimension by using a dimensional reduction technique like PCA or TSNA. We would end up some, with something like this one. All of the crosses uh, shows all of the each of the crosses show a recipe embedding, and here if we we can easily deploy approximate nearest neighbor search on any uh, point to find closest points on this vector space. For example, when you take a look at the recipe here, which is crispy chicken with homemade pesto, a pea and potato, and when we take a look at the other one next to that recipe that is quick and creamy chicken with cheese peas and buttery mash they are somewhat close we can call them similar recipes by just looking at their ingredients dish types and recipe title and subtitle on the other hand there is another example spaghetti uh we have a spaghetti dish and another mediterranean spaghetti meat core with mozzarella uh and olives. We can uh, easily search any uh, kind of recipes there by using a reference recipe, which have actually we deployed the, this approach one of in one of our UIs. I want to show a demo after this presentation. And there are some examples from our tool. On the left, we have Greek beef moussaka with baked aubergine and fresh carrot salad. On the right, beef moussaka with eggplant and grated cheese. The similarity score between them is 0 0.93, according to our uh, tool. And again, another example of similar recipes, vegetarian pulled beef uh, and veggie pulled bean tacos with caramelized onions. These are original fellow fresh recipes and similar to score is uh, 0 0.921 which we uh, count as highly similar. When we took a look at the distribution of the similar pairs, uh, all of the recipes, uh, possible pairs combined, and when we take a look at the similar score distribution, uh, pairs which have, which, uh, which score has more than 0 0.85 can be counted as uh, similar pairs, but actually, I remember the question for the Pavel. There is no evaluation method yet. We are just uh, making contacts with local menu planners and uh, want their feedback about the similar recipe pairs or non-similar recipe pairs. We are still trying to figure out uh, good ways to evaluate uh, our similar discourse. And this is an, an example of this similar recipe. On the left side, we have vegetarian pulled bean wrap. On the right side is the Danish meatballs with bacon and chili mash. And similar score is low here. So we can uh, say that these recipes are not so similar. And I would like to let Jan Su go on here about recipe similarity in menu optimization. Uh, thank you, Samet, for explaining recipe similarity tool in such detail. And I will walk you through uh, in menu optimization part, where we value similarity scores. I'm an operations researcher in upstream analytics, as well as uh, Pavel and Samet. I work uh, on GAMP, mostly, our menu optimization tool. Uh, why recipe similarity is valuable in menu planning? At first, let's discuss this. Uh, with GAMP, uh, we try to find the optimal menu allocation from using our given recipe pool, a demand layout, and a set of constraints. Uh, if you're familiar with operations research and mixed integer programming, you may know that uh, satisfying constraints is the most crucial part uh, for uh, making our stakeholders happy and the optimal solution will be used they will be adopted by our stakeholders uh, so let's go through the main constraint sets that we have in many optimization at first uh, our stakeholders wants to assign some proteins tags and concept uh, into the menu uh, regarding their recipes they have lots of attributes that summit use in the similarity tour we want to prevent repetition 
and uh, we also want to increase variety in order to increase variety we have lots of different constraints uh, they are they have a huge number and impact on the menu optimization so a similarity tool uh, that uh, we can measure the variety on the menu would benefit us to create constraints and evaluate different menus in menu optimization uh, we can skip the slides on that so our issue when we see these similarity scores is how we can how we can use similarity scores in menu planning uh, it's obvious that we need to at first convert them into constraints uh, which means that we need to convert them into mathematical formulations to use in mixed integer programming uh, we have two different approaches for that uh, the first approach is that uh, as Samet mentions uh, we have some thresholds that we can define recipes if they are really similar or not. Uh, when we just uh, remove the dissimilar recipes, we have some pairs on hand and we can create constraints based on that. We can say that if recipe A and B are really similar to each other, we don't want both of them in our menu. So we can create a constraint to prevent that. By, but uh, this means that if we have lots of similar recipes in the recipe pool, we need to create lots of constraints to satisfy this need. So uh, we can say that this approach, yes, it's it may work on menu planning, but it's creating lots of constraints. Therefore, creating mathematical formulations uh, in the mixed integer programming is taking so much time and it's increasing complexity in order to do so. The second approach is creating clusters. Uh, in this approach, we don't need to create so many constraints. We can do it by just using uh, the number of uh, clusters as the constraint number and try to limit the use of uh, recipes that we specify in each, each cluster. We can also use thresholds to uh, just make our recipe pool similar re similar to recipe pool smaller it's one flexible approach and the other one is we can set sizes of clusters we can set lower and upper bounds to uh, define the size of the cluster or even we can uh, just predefine uh, with a lower bound and upper bound on clusters and run our optimization model to optimize optimize the clustering approach uh, this is one way but this also uh, slightly increases the complexity of the problem. Therefore, uh, we also consider to remove some constraints in order to use these constraints instead of them. With this approach, we can also automate using variety constraints in menu optimization, and it will be beneficial for our stakeholders to work on their constraint sets less. They will, it will decrease their workload as well. Uh, we can go to the other slide. Uh, while doing similarity clusters, we had an important problem. How to cluster recipes by similarity scores. But in order to do so, uh, how many clusters should we use? This was one problem because we have a, a recipe pool that changed from cycle to cycle in two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, depending on our market. And we needed to do a new clustering approach. We, need to, we needed to renom and define the number of clusters in each cycle. Uh, this was uh, one problem and redoing the work was another problem in order to optimize the menu. So we needed a robust approach to use in this. Uh, we also used mixed integer programming in order to cluster our recipes with their similarity scores. In order to do so, we uh, took the power of uh, Grobby, our solver, and minimize the disagreement in clusters. We have an input of similarity scores, as you can see as C in here. It defines uh, if a recipe pair is similar or not. We also have a decision variable defining that if a recipe pair uh, will be in the same cluster or not. Uh, with this optimization approach, we can define lower and upper bounds on cluster sizes. And also we can put a lower and upper bound on number of clusters. So it will just fit into our stakeholders needs and they can uh, just go back and forth to create the uh, similarity clusters as they need to form constraints. The objective function is uh, about just minimizing the similarities with a distance function function as it's used in 
lots of clustering approaches. Uh, the next one, uh, we can show you a clustering example that we have done in France recipe pool uh, with the similarity map that Summit shared with us. Uh, in this cluster, you can see we only have three recipes. When we have smaller clusters and smaller recipe pools, our similarity scores uh, get higher in clusters. Uh, you can see a recipe or tree of three in this cluster with 0 0.7 as the average similarity score. Uh, we can use the uh, put a bound on the similar recipes with use of these clusters. And uh, in the next example, we have five recipes, which are pork recipes. As you can see, these recipes can be uh, considered similar uh, when we evaluate them in person. And the similarity score is, is nearly 0 0.6, but it also means something. The main point uh, on using this approach is just getting feedback of the recipe pool and with their feedback, creating the right set of clusters to create the constraints in many optimization. Uh, thank you, Samet. I guess you can conclude. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I have one more slide. How to decide on the similarity threshold? <laughs> this is the question that they mentioned before. We need to set a similarity threshold to create a smaller set of similar recipes in order to cluster them before. But this is the question. How can we define this uh, threshold? Therefore, we need the feedback of our stakeholders, menu planners, in order to create a constraint set. Uh, how to decide on the size and number of clusters? With the power of operations research, we don't need to define a size or number of clusters. We just need to define a lower bound and an upper bound and our optimization approach. And how should we use similarity constraints? It's easy. We can use both pairwise comparison approach and create uh, constraints in order to increase the similarity, uh, in order to decrease uh, similarity in the menu. And also we can use clustering approach if the menu planner can give us feedbacks and create the clusters that is needed in order to do the menu optimization. Thank you. <laughs> so Thank you, Jansu, for explaining the recipe similarity usage in menu optimization. And I would like to conclude here. Uh, as we talked about it, we are leveraging text embeddings to compare recipes based on their similarity and leveraging approximate neighbor search, we can easily search a large uh, recipe pools to find similar recipes. Uh, one of the important uh, one to conclude, the score we provide is not an absolute decision point to decide similarity, actually. It is a relative value which tells that two, if two pairs have different uh, recipe similarity score, if and if one of them is bigger, we can say that the first uh, two pairs are much more similar than the second pair. So it's like a soft metric, not a decisive metric in terms of evaluation and decision. And uh, we would like to make this tool available and visible across the teams and company. And lastly, I would like to take you to the demo and it would be great if you had played around and give us some feedback. We are still trying to improve the uh, tool here. Uh, this is our recipe, similar recipe search engine. Here we have a couple of inputs there. For example, I would like to search spaghetti with shrimps uh, titled recipe in Nordic's market. And I'd like to filter down to tags and preferences with quick and quick and easy. And my main protein is seafood shrimp here. You can select anything you want. Like here, the filters, you can specify anything there. And when you hit click uh, search, you could see the most similar recipes to that imaginary recipe, even before you create the recipe itself. Actually, we thought that these are uh, very uh, useful for recipe developers and menu planners before releasing a menu to the customers or finalizing it if they have similar recipes in the menu already and if they want to change some uh, recipes to increase variety in their menus. 
and you can see the score and SCN, the customer score and similarity score here, ordered by the similarity score in decreasing manner. And there is another functionality, which uh, again, a search capability, which uses the existing recipe. For example, you can put any recipe code here. For example, we have a uh, Italianish uh, pizza uh, here from dark market. And if you like to find similar recipes to that recipe on dark market, we would like to, uh, we can use still the search button here to see similar recipes. The first one is itself. So the similar score is one. So in decreasing manner, you can see the list. Uh, it should be vegetarian pizzas mostly. And as I said, this tool uh, can be used by a uh, wide range of uh, teams in the HelloFresh, and we would like to get your feedback and opinions about it. And we're still trying to improve the uh, model itself, working behind the tool, and the tool itself to make it user more user-friendly and uh, more performant way and that's it um thank you for yeah, listening thank you, yeah thank you summit and yeah that was a wonderful presentation on uh, recipe similarity and, and clustering we have quite a few um questions here so i'll try to get through as many as we can in our last three minutes um maybe i'll ask a question that i had first uh summit you showed a 2d plot of the um, based on similarity, uh, and I saw that there were different languages there. Did, have you explored the ability to tell similarities between recipes that are similar, but maybe have di are, are, are of different languages? Yeah, this is actually uh, the model behind the pre-trained model we are using is multilingual model, and that is able to embed from di uh, 50, 50 different languages, from Chinese to another European language, we are using that. So uh, you can even uh, filter down by Japanese uh, recipes by using uh, European uh, English keywords or German keywords there. So it is actually supported there. That's awesome. Okay, so the first uh, so a question here, um, are there plans to use uh, image similarity to complement the um, rested similarity engine? Uh, can you say again? Like, yeah. Sorry. No worries. Uh, do you have plans to use images for recipe similarity? Yeah, actually, it, it, we had some discussions about it, but uh, we, for the midterm, short and midterm, we haven't planned you to use images uh, on the recipe similarity. Currently, we are going with the uh, text features of the recipe recipes. But it would be interesting to see if we can find something uh, that we can enable images by to uh, make similarity assessments between recipes. Do you, Paul, ask here? Do you take more than the just recipe titles into account for your embeddings? Yeah, all of the recipe ingredients are uh, embedded into those vectors, like recipe title, subtitle uh dish type cuisine primary protein primary vegetable all of the primary ingredients are in the embeddings and they have weights weights attached to them while we calculating the over last uh, recipe embedding we are multiplying those weights with the corresponding feature but right. it is actually adjustable uh anyone can adjust those weights to uh to their markets for example uh, Nordic's team can uh, put more import importance to the cuisine type, while dark markets can uh, can think that I don't know primary protein is much more important. They can adjust those weights uh, to their tasks. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, uh, I will um, catalog the rest of these questions um, in our notes. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Samit Yansu, for the wonderful presentation. And I think I'll hand it hey. back to Mike. Yeah, thanks a bunch. Uh, 
really cool work. Like I said, there's a lot of fun work going on with uh, recipes. So stay tuned for uh, 